Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric, back again with another autopilot video. And in this video, I'm running software version 2019.32.2 in my Model 3. I currently have hardware 2.5, so that's autopilot hardware 2.5. And we are gonna be showing you what the changes are as far as this software update versus later sub software updates or previous software updates. So as you can see here, I am in autopilot and you can tell that by the blue steering wheel that's on the screen and the two blue lines. And you can see going around this curve, it's doing a great job following this car in front of us, even though it is a wider lane, it's not going like jumping to the middle like I've seen before, but it's actually doing a pretty good job following the car. You do see that blue line wanting to jump over because we're not, um, seeing any white line on the other side of the road. And the autopilot was actually telling us to apply a slight turning force there. So pretty interesting. Always keep your hands on the wheel just like I do. Be ready to take over and don't do some crazy stuff like you've seen people do, I'm sure. So here we are on a larger stretch of road and notice here this red car is coming over and the autopilot definitely is most of the time really courteous, but right there, was kind of speeding up and I would have liked to see the autopilot slow down a little bit sooner. So we're getting onto an on-ramp here and it actually jumps for a split second into nav on autopilot. So navigate on autopilot with a single blue line ahead, but then I did have to take over. Here's a slower look at that. And it's very quick as we go and enter this roundabout to get on a major highway. So once I'm on the roundabout, as you can see there, I'm able to engage autopilot by pulling down on the drive stock. That's the stock on the right side of the steering wheel, just pulling down on that twice. So navigate on autopilot, like you just saw, one blue line going forward. Now the difference between autopilot and navigate on autopilot, navigate on autopilot is gonna make lane changes for you. So you can see that because we have navigate on autopilot on, that blue rectangle pops down and says, hey, upcoming lane change, get ready. And so currently what you have to do is make sure your hands are on the wheel so that it's gonna prompt you to uh, apply a slight force to the wheel to make sure that your hands are on the wheel. So you can see here we go through a couple lane changes. My exit is coming up, so I manually uh, move the car over into the left lane. And you can see that it wants to get me out of the left lane almost instantly knowing that I have to get over. But if I turn use HOV off, then manually get in the HOV lane, it'll actually move you out of an HOV lane, which is a nice feature to have if uh, you wanna avoid those HOV tickets that we all hate, that's for sure. Still on Navigate on Autopilot, and you can see the car has actually been moving over automatically from the left lane to the right lane, knowing that my exit is coming up. Now, this is something where if you're going on a longer trip, it's really nice and a great feature to have. So you can see here this automatic lane change going over and then this white car is definitely gonna come over. And so I do give a couple friendly toots of the horn and don't have to disengage autopilot, but was kind of curious to see what autopilot would have done there if that car would have come over. No real big improvement from what I see looking at the Navigate on Autopilot here. It does do a great job when we come up to an exit. I know there are some corner case exits uh, where it has missed the exits. I've seen a couple of those, but you can see as soon as that exit lane opens up, it takes that exit lane using the turn signal and everything. So that operates about the same as I've seen in previous versions, even with the limited lane lines here. Now it's gonna switch at the bottom, at the base of this ramp, exit ramp, back to regular autopilot. So we're still in navigate on autopilot here until you see it switch to two blue lines on your center screen, which it's already done. Sorry about that. And at the base of this exit ramp here, you're gonna actually see that screen pop up and it's gonna say, uh, press the accelerator pedal and it's just gonna go to hold. Like, never seen this happen before, so I had to actually press the accelerator pedal to get the car to go forward. Which, to me, is like, why would Tesla 
require that you press the accelerator pedal at the base of an exit ramp. It, like, it should just be a smooth transition from navigate on autopilot to just regular autopilot. So here we are in regular autopilot. I'm gonna make a manual lane change. Regular autopilot will not do automatic lane changes for you. So you saw me turn on the turn signal and it got over surprisingly quickly. I was really thinking that it wasn't gonna get over that quickly, but that was really impressive how quickly it was able to jump right over. So this intersection does have like a larger right-hand turn. It's not a regular turn lane. So let's see if it does end up taking this right hand turn lane so not trying to turn into that gas station there nope we're all electric over here so and it does do a good job it picks the middle lane which is pretty impressive not a bad right hand turn at an intersection there so about on par with what we've seen one huge improvement that i've noticed in 32.2.2 is the backup camera almost immediately pops up which is a nice breath of fresh air because if you guys have seen previous updates, it did take a while for the backup camera. Sometimes when you put it in reverse to pop up, you would just get that black screen for a while. So here we're gonna attempt a left turn following that car and it just wanted to go straight across the intersection. So I did have to take over. And again, if you're new to this channel, thank you so much for watching, first of all, but the car is not designed to make turns at intersections. It's designed for the highway right now. So don't be discouraged and think that, oh, this Tesla autopilot thing isn't working great because it is working great and it's not designed for that. So we are in autopilot coming onto a uh, major highway here and it is in navigate on autopilot, again, meaning that it's going to make the lane changes for us. So you can see here, it does get over, although I would have liked to see it get over a little bit sooner rather than kind of it runs out of road and then gets over. So like most of you guys know, we do have a Model X and this Model 3 that you see here. And my wife did mention that she felt like the Model 3 did nag her to keep her hands on the wheel more than her Model X. So if you guys have tested both vehicles or if you've used autopilot or navigate on autopilot in either the Model S or X and the Model 3, and you think that the Model 3 does bug you a little bit more or you don't think it does, let me know down in the comment section. I'm interested to see what you guys think about that and see if my wife is right. So switching gears over to a different type of road, we have autopilot engaged on this smaller four lane road, like divided highway with stoplights and everything. So we're in the right hand lane and we are in autopilot because we have two blue lines and the blue steering wheel on the screen following this car. And we can see on the center display, sorry for the glare, but we can see on the center display that the autopilot does in fact see this car. Now it did a really good job slowing down for this truck here. And I have seen in pre other updates that it will actually speed up. If you saw back there where the car got over to the left lane and then uh, the lane was open for us. So really good job there making a smooth transition. Just like that smooth transition from the right to the left lane, how I did manually turning the turn signal on there. Here's another example of how the autopilot does a smooth transition, recognizing that the car is slowing down in front of us and it's really smooth slowing down. It's not very jerky like we've seen before where it kind of accelerates and um, brakes really quickly. 
So a lane change there, which is as smooth as can be before we get to some testing that I did at night. So we actually got some testing done with the autopilot at night and I do feel like the autopilot does perform a little bit better at night. And as you can see here, the lane lines almost illuminate and become brighter, which makes it easier for the camera to see. So I think that's why it does perform a little bit better at night. So we are going through some construction area here just on regular autopilot right now. And it does a great job with these uh, kind of drawn in lane lines. And we're in the center lane here and it's doing a really solid job. You can see that it's able to identify every single car that's around us. And I feel very confident as a driver using this autopilot system in a heavier traffic sort of situation where there's a lot of cars around me, I'm on a major highway moving at high speeds because I know that the autopilot is looking at all the cars around me 360 degrees 24 seven. So right there you saw a transition from regular autopilot to navigate on autopilot with one blue line. And so the car is gonna make lane changes by itself like I just told you in the first part of this video. So at night, I would say the Navigate on Autopilot is performing about the same as it does during the day, which is good. We wanna see that from a system that's supposed to be able to drive cars all by itself without a human driver when the FSD software gets released as we progress towards that with each incremental update. So a long sweeping curve here before the road starts to straighten out again and no issue whatsoever for the navigator and autopilot. So in the right hand lane and it takes the exit with ease and like we saw before during the day, it took the exit right away and did not hesitate to take the exit. One thing that I will note is right there, it did go to regular autopilot and did really start to slow down and I had to speed it up here and then at the end of this exit ramp, it said take over immediately and just couldn't handle it, got kind of lost in that shoulder area because of the limited lane markings. So definitely still some improvements that need to be done. Now, I also went on some more curvy roads with this autopilot 2019.32.2.2. And I would say that it is about the same as I tested with the last software version. Now, this is a different road than I typically test. And so it's still impressive to see with these aggressive curves and hills and really kind of tight surroundings that the car was able to do such a good job with, you can see these shadows too, and these curves where it's limited visibility because of the glare and uh, those sort of things. So it did do a great job. You can see it on that curve there, it did hug the left just a little bit, but overall I'm really impressed with this software version and I'm excited to get the next one as I'm sure you all are well aware, version 10 is coming soon. So while you're waiting for version 10, I thought I would talk about something that I've been thinking Tesla should include with all their cars. Most smartphones that you buy nowadays have wireless charging built into the smartphone, which is really nice, but Tesla doesn't include a wireless charger. So I did get this one off of Amazon and I'll leave a link to this charger down below in the description. There's a couple things that I do like about this charger. I do like the fit and the look of it and the ease of install too. And they also give you a couple USB splitters if you wanna plug in both and you want to also uh, have your dash cam or something like that installed. So we get a little indicator light flashing and even with this OtterBox case on my iPhone 8 Plus, it is able to charge right through the case, which is really nice just to throw it on there. My one gripe is that you cannot charge a regular plug-in phone and that because of how it's set up, it actually limits the size. So the iPhone 8 Plus does fit, but it is rather tight. So if you want to check this wireless charger out and purchase it on Amazon, I'll leave a link down below in the description. Click the link down below and head over to Patreon and support this channel for as little as $1 a month. 
higher tiers actually get early access to all of my YouTube videos, which is pretty cool. Huge shout out to my all electric tier supporters, our Mana Min and our Gram Atul. Thank you so much, guys. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so yet, click that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.